Okay, I've got the SR set up on the stand. And what I'm going to do with this wheel that I've just tightened all the spokes up on is build it with the original components, the drive side on the left and the brake side on the right. And I'm going to assemble that back onto the bike, into the swing arm, and do it up so it's a rotating assembly. And that way, I'm actually going to be able to true the rim on the bike. And what I'll be doing is I'll be centering the rim because the hub will be in its fixed position, I'll be centering the rim in the swing arm. Okay, once you've got the rebuilt wheel back in the frame, it should rotate as freely as possible. Mine was um, catching a little bit, so I've removed the brake pads on the right side, and uh, it actually should rotate even better than this, so once I disassemble it again, uh, once I've finished truing everything, I'll recheck the bearing instalment. Um, for this next phase, for truing the rim, we're actually going to be using label off and a rag and a red pen. And with those things, we're going to be making and removing marks around the perimeter and the diameter of the rim. Uh, and we're going to be using a spoke key. And this spoke key is a 6.2 for these particular, particular nipples. And uh, these you can get from uh, sort of like uh, vehicle hardware stores. I got this from Bill Teamer in Sweden. And I've removed the other end because it's a double-ended one. And that just makes things easier so I don't get the wrong key and confuse it with the spoke because you can round off the, the nipples here. So um, I'll set up the camera to go through the next phase. So here I'm set up with my tools. And you're going to want to make it comfortable because this is a time-consuming process and you'll need a lot of patience. You can see under here I've taped in a straight edge and that is going to help us align the rim and you can see what I'm going to work on first is the axial straightness and you can see I've actually got quite a lot of work to do here it's pretty out of round and I'm going to work on that first before I work on the alignment and then last will be getting the rim straight on the hub so what I'll do is I'll be making marks around the rim with the red pen and mark out a high spot and with that high spot what I'll be doing is I'll be pulling it closer to the hub so I'll be tightening those spokes but first I'll be loosening the spokes on the other side of the rim to allow that movement to happen and then hopefully I'll get to within the factory run out limits and I'll specify those in the next clip. Okay I've jostled this rim back and forth a little bit tightening and loosening spokes on opposite sides to try and get it to line up radially a little bit better. It's far from good, but it's a little bit better. And at this point, at this stage, I'm actually going to start doing things uh, axially as well. So what I'll do to do this is I'll slowly feed in the red pen, kind of like a pin on a record player. And I'll be spinning the rim and feeding this in and trying to pick up any high points on the side of the rim and once I end up with a mark I will loosen the spokes on the side where the high point is first and then tighten the spokes on the other side and what that will do is it will shift the rim over to be slightly more in the center uh, and remove that high spot and I'll do this back and forth on either sides of the rim until we get to within the factory run out limits um, and at the same time I'm going to keep an eye on how well centered the rim is and the swing arm and that we can see here so I'll keep an eye on this flange in relation to the left side of the swing arm and this flange in relationship to the right side of the swing arm and I'll be able to measure that and make sure that it's even on both sides so I'm going to work with that now and come back in a little while I just thought I'd clarify the two marks we're trying to make on the rim one is for axial movement and you'll see what I do is I feed the red pen in from the side and hold it in position. And when a high point comes along, I've actually marked one here. You can see it leaves a very clear mark across a distance around the perimeter. And you can see where it's at its most intense is obviously the highest point and then it sort of fades away. But this here, what we want to do is to pull the rim that way away from the camera and this part can be quite confusing, but it's the spokes on this side of the rim, or better explained, on this side of the hub. So on this flange here of the hub, you want to loosen those, and you want to tighten the ones on the other side. 
and that will slowly bring it across. And this is a uh, time-consuming repetitive process and you need to do that all the way around and you'll get closer and closer. So this high spot will keep moving until there's obviously no high spots left. Um, that's the direction we want to go in. And then the same, I've done the same thing here for radial movement. Uh, there's one here. So instead of feeding the pen in from the side, I've fed it in from above and I've marked out that here's the high point here and I'm going to slowly work that rim down towards the hub and again um, it's a step-by-step -step process and that high spot is going to keep moving but we're going to get closer and closer to uh, a perfectly centered rim and hub. Okay I've been working at this for about half an hour now and uh, I've just got some fine tuning to go and if we take a look at the manual we can see that our vertical, both our vertical and lateral run out limits are two millimeters. You can see uh, in the manual they suggest a much more sophisticated setup with a dial gauge, but I've found that this setup works just fine. And if I refocus the camera, okay, now I've set the camera up on a tripod so we can see the final adjustments needed here. And uh, to get this close, I've actually have to move, had to move my straight edge closer to the rim because I'm getting very close to the final end product. And uh, here we can see I've put some white paper behind so you can see the gap between the rim and the straight edge. And I'm getting very close to a two millimeter vertical run out. And I'm almost exactly home on the two millimeter lateral run out. And if I get another camera angle, I'm actually pretty satisfied with my lateral run out. It's certainly less than two millimeters. It's about, it's more like one millimeter. You can see that gap between my nail here. So I'll just keep working a little bit on the vertical and then we'll be home. Okay, I've given this rim another 15 minutes of chewing and messing around with the spokes. And uh, you can see it's super close. It looks like it's hopping around a lot, but in reality, once you get close to this gap and I've got out my shims, I'm within one millimeter axially and one millimeter vertically or radi radially and yes it does look like that much but it's within one millimeter each side I'll probably still chip away at this for a little bit longer but for the purposes of this video I think this is good enough and you get the idea the last thing you want to do is go around and tighten all the spokes so that they're none of there's none loose and they all feel like they're to the same tightness um, and then if you feel like you've got it to the point the best you can do you can always take it into the shop when you get the tire put on and, and ask them to do the final truing for you if they feel like that's out of the out of your competence. But the fact that you've done you've got this far is going to save you a lot of money. And uh, you'll see in the background there's actually an aluminium flat edge where I've marked two red marks on either side. And this is something that's also really important that I've sort of hopped over here a little bit, but I've kept an eye on it the whole time, and that is that the rim is centered in the swing arm. So I've made a measurement here on the left side, and I've also made a measurement here on the right side, and those are equal, which means that our rim is running right in the middle of our swing arm. You see those marks there. So that's complete. I'm going to take this rim off the bike and take it into the shop and get a cool tire mounted to it. One last tip I think it's good to point out is that if you feel like you've got really close and you're still ending up with a slight glitch in the radial movement, it could be because, and this is what I've found in my case, is where the rim is actually welded together, it can be a bit high and they haven't ground it completely smooth. Now that's not going to affect the actual diameter on the inside of the rim, uh, so it's not going to affect your wheel build as a whole, but it, uh, it might measure a little off when you come to your straight edge and that will explain the little bobbing around a little bit and the last thing is um, to check to see if your spokes are done up tight enough or at least uh, to an even tension you should be able to hear the same note from them from each one as you hit them so I'm going to spin this around and you'll hear that they're pretty close same on this side And if something sounds completely off or flat or dead, that spoke probably needs to be tightened up a little bit. 
that's it. Okay, here's three SR250 rear wheels. Here's the rim and hub that we just built with the tire that I'm going to have a shot put on for me so they can balance it. Here is the rear wheel for the 100 mile per hour SR250 project. And here's the stock wheel or the stock rim, 16 inches. And this one's actually rather fat. The stock uh, tire size is 120, but this is a 130. So the previous owner has put that on. Uh, and you can see the difference it makes in uh, both style and weight um, when you when you go to an 18 inch aluminium rim and you can see I've put a modern tire on this because I'm wanting to get up to some decent speeds and the handling is hugely improved with a decent tire so that's going to be the cafe racer or a hundred mile per hour uh, SR and here is going to be uh, somewhat of a track tracker build so you can see that's more of a tracker style tire these tires I can list in the comments uh, thank you for tuning in and uh, if you have any questions with relacing the rim just hit us up and uh, happy wrenching and happy riding. Cheers!